Hello everyone and welcome back to another Firefly Studios video. Aaron here, back with another episode of Stronghold and Chill. To that end, I've brought Mr. Jack Massey, one of our uh, junior programmers here at the studio. Uh, you guys know the format, one of the developers upstairs, bring them down here, put them in what I call the hot seat. Um, it does actually get hot, don't worry. Oh, yeah. uh, so we can get to know the developers a little better, some game dev related, some just you know general life questions. But uh, Jack, are you, are you ready to get started? I hope so. Yes. <laughs> I hope so do, Jack. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be a shit video. <laughs> so, while I set up my resolute castle defenses and have everybody comment saying how shit they are, yeah. um, could you take us through what exactly you do here at Firefly Studios? and sort of your average day within mm. the studio. So what, what you'll get done in an average day, that sort of thing. In regards to what I do, so I program on one of our lesser known projects, I would say. Yeah. Uh, I've been working on that basically since inception is what I was hired for and I've been doing that time immemorial basically. Mm -hmm. My main day to day is I'm a programmer. I work with the Unity game engine. For those who don't know what the Unity game engine is, that's just the standard games engine, much like Unreal and Frostbite, if you've ever heard of those in the games industry, it's kind yeah. of a similar cat of fish. Uh, but I spend my day coding fun into games. So if, if I'm told, hey, we need a feature or something needs to be fixed, it's usually either my fault or my responsibility to work <laughs> yeah. that out. So. But that's kind of my day-to-day, -day, just making sure things get fixed, things get implemented, people have a lot of fun. That's what I do. Well, I think that's something we can all get behind. Um, so during these interviews, I like to, I like to do one of one. So one uh, game development question, and then one sort of general uh, life. Get to know you better. Yes, yeah, try, try and understand the face behind the code, so to speak. <laughs> exactly, that's a very good way of, oh, I'm gonna write that into my next script. <laughs> But we'll jump into our second question. Um, and this is, I, I think uh, the audience love to know this. About, or one gamer likes to know this about another gamer. Yeah. What's your favorite game of all time? Oh, that is a difficult question. As a game developer, I think most people in our studio have kind of a broad palette in terms of games. Mainly just to kind of keep up with the industry. Like everyone's like playing the latest games and all that, just to make sure. But I think my favorite game of all time is I'm probably going to say Dwarf Fortress, in all honesty, like, which is quite interesting given Firefly's history of strategy games. Dwarf Fortress does have elements of strategy. Whilst it doesn't have the pretty UI and graphics of Stronghold, it is certainly kind of playing towards those elements and it's quite useful in forming decisions that I have in the studio. Okay, so wait, just let me deconstruct this answer first. Yeah. Sorry. So Dwarf Fortress, to my mind, is that weird, like, <laughs> I don't even know how to explain it. It's like, I'll put an image on screen right now, but like, isn't it? I, I, su I like, suppose I suppose if people wanted it's, to- It's almost text-based. Yeah, no, yeah. So Door Fortress is rendered in, what, uh, rendered in what's known as uh, ASCII-based graphics. So for those who don't know, ASCII is like an American standard for uh, punctuation symbols and various other symbology in oh, keyboards. Gosh. However, I, obviously I'm, I'm not that masochistic. I use what's called a tile set, so it loads in a bunch of graphics for me. I'm not, unfortunately, so hardcore that I can oh, play so without the graphics. So, so there are options to oh, add graphics okay. to the game. I'm not, I'm not looking at at symbols and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, oh, that's like what I was oblique slashes and all that for my information. No, I'm actually looking at graphics, but obviously those have to be yeah. modded in. They're not in the base game. To bring it back to uh, game development. Um, just generally, did you always want to be sort of a game developer, or did you? Did you? Uh, the young Jack. No, actually. Picked up an N64 and was like, I want to do this. So <laughs> I. So some people in the audience may uh, be able to uh, sympathise with this, but my parents really hated video games when I was a kid. Like I wanted like oh, yeah. uh, uh, snares wanted an N64. They were like, no, games are going to rot your brain. Oh, blah blah blah, all that sort of stuff. So when I was really? like four, like four, five, six, when I think a lot of my peers had a game system in their ha house at some point, yeah, I was yeah, yeah. banned from it. The only time I got to play games was around my mate's houses but I think ironically that led me to want to like be involved with games more yeah, but ori yeah, yeah. originally it wasn't games it was more like science and tech it was in the same ballpark but then I realized as I was doing my A levels I was like how can I get this degree into video games I was like okay maybe I should consider that as a career option instead a lot wow. of people a lot of people persuaded me against it because like oh you're never going to get a job in that industry it's so hard a lot of people say the same about TV as well but it's like oh, as long yeah, as you're yeah, willing yeah. to persist and like kind of go into the correct like, events it's people say that all the time but it's like well some people get jobs in oh yeah so like, someone you know, needs to do the job yeah, exactly. like it's someone 
now that you're in the games industry, mm. you're working on Metamorph, hopefully uh, working on Stronghold in the future. Yes. Um, and you said you've, you've only been here a couple of years, but yeah. I still want to know, Jack, what's your happiest memory uh, while you've been at the studio? Not, not just your <laughs> happiest memory, <laughs> <laughs> happiest uh, I'm memory not your therapist. Ever. I'm not your therapist. <laughs> no, no. Um, Th yeah. Therapy and chill. But, uh, yeah. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> I think it'd be our first Christmas party back in 2016. We met, we met a man called the Ram, as he was self-described, <laughs> and he was kind of like he was. It was just great to talk to. But it was like it wasn't just that incident, but it was like the entire night of meeting all meeting all the developers, meeting the people in QA, meeting mm -hmm. some of the people from America. It was kind of like really eye-opening to see how many people and how much effort goes into these games, yeah. like. We may be a small company, but we know how to focus our efforts, and we're, I think we're a talented bunch, to say the least. But to, to counteract that, to sour that, yeah. your, what, what was your worst? Oh, worst yeah. memory. I think it would have been, it was actually in my first four or five weeks, so I just joined, and I, was, I would not call myself, or I wouldn't have called myself a hotshot programmer, whether I am now is up for debate. But back then, I was very new to the industry and extremely nervous because obviously, big opportunity, getting your first permanent job, it's kind yeah. of a huge thing to be involved in. Yeah. And so they sent me out to, um, uh, not many people may know this, but we actually have part of our company in America. And I was sent out there for the week to kind of familiarize, it, familiarize myself with some of the uh, other Metamorph programmers, mainly uh, Tony, I think. And I was tasked, hey, why don't you make the health circles underneath enemies kind of have like an animation? So when you attack them, it flashes up white with the amount they've lost and then okay. peels back in. So like you kind of get the flash of white and it shrinks back into the next amount. Yeah. And I was struggling with this really badly. Like I was like, I've done something, I've broken it and like we're going to continue. I was like, oh no, I haven't done it, I haven't done it. I'm there, I'm panicking. And then I go home and about halfway through my bath, I stand up and I realize what I've got to do. So the following morning I go in and fix it. But I was, it was just the sheer panic of my first few weeks. Uh, so it was like, okay, it, was, yeah. it was kind of like um, beginner nerves in a way. Like it was oh, just, yeah, no, no, it yeah. was, that was like kind of the, I, I'd say my worst memory, so to speak, but it's now resolved and we've improved from there. But. Absolutely. Yeah, I feel I feel anyone at a new studio can sympathize oh, with yeah. that, you know, or any any new company in general. Yes, like, yeah. there's always those weird, awkward first few weeks where, like, you put way too much pressure on yourself. Yes. Now that we've sort of uh, uh, raided your memories of Firefly, <laughs> uh, what if, if, if somebody came up to you and said, I want to get to where you are right now, your exact position? And in other words, what would you say to a younger you who was trying to get to where you were? So I think specifically to a younger me, there are a couple of things I'd probably say. First of all is, whilst it is, whilst there is like an imperative reason to get into the industry, it's cool and all that, don't crush yourself with the pressure of getting in. Like there are a lot of things you can do. So like going to game jams, going to various industry events. So uh, Yuki and Igda, who are like the two bigger thing, uh, bigger people in the industry, yeah. Uh, to hold a lot of events, we can meet devs. So even if you're, I think even students get like a student membership with a lot of uh, university courses. Yeah. So if you're studying games development, you've got that membership. Take advantage of it. Like meet these people. They may be your future bosses. They may be your future colleagues. Definitely worth mm -hmm. meeting up and linking up with them. If you're a programmer specifically, like I was aiming to be, uh, program like asked about as much as I can say. There, are, there are going to be element. There are going to be times where you struggle. You don't get something. And people are like, oh, I got this immediately. They probably didn't. They're lying to you. Like, they, they probably spent a lot of time sitting down figuring it out, but it's just sitting down and pushing yourself to it. That does apply to other areas as well, but I'm not an artist. I'm colorblind. Don't let me do art. <laughs> uh, I don't do music. However, I'm not a musician. I'm basically tone deaf. So again, programming was the only thing that was left for me. So that's <laughs> what I decided to pursue, but I pursued it with as much as I could. So... Put a lot of effort into it, but don't crush yourself with the pressure of doing it. It can be very easy to stress yourself out and go, oh no, I don't think I've done everything correctly. Just mm -hmm. try as hard as you can. Again, to, to reel back from mm -hmm. that serious game dev talk, <laughs> uh, we'll get to know a little bit more about your music taste. Okay. Yeah. Um, so could you tell everybody what your favorite uh, musician of all time is? I'd say I don't have a favorite musician all the time. I'm being pedantic. I know some people are like, oh, just answer the question. But like, I don't have a favorite musician all the time. Currently, my favorite musician is, however, uh, Charles Gambino. I've been listening to This Is America. I've been very late to that train. This is America. Don't catch you slipping now. Don't catch you slipping now. Look what I'm whipping now. <laughs> came out a few months ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was going to say, like, but I've been listening to it, like, on rotation. Like, I've just been like, it's 
kind of amazing, really, really well done as a video. So again, flipping back, game dev, we're back. We're back in the land of the, the professional. And I, I know you've, you've, while you've been here, you've, you might have worked on a few projects, mainly Metamorph, um, now on Steam, um, in early access. Uh, but could you name us your favorite Firefly title if you had one? So I um, actually, so prior to uh, my interview with Firefly, I actually like bought a bunch of the games and started playing through them. I think, I do think Crusader HD is one of my more favorite games i think it's more the easy it, yeah. well the thing easy. is it is the thematicism of it it's like you're talking about the crusades and all that and that is kind of quite a big portion of religious history and it's quite interesting from that point of view so that's kind of the answer i'd go to a crux aren't right no i mean really this will shock a lot of people i'm an age of empires fan but like that's <gasps> i know i know uh, we, like... we share the love <laughs> of us. like we share the love every gamer loves to know this about another game and what's your highest number of hours played in any game ever can this be is, with it, the Steam hours or pre-Steam. It can be an estimate. This is this is. Uh, I would like to say embarrassing, but I'm also proud of it in a way. This we actually uh, this actually came up as a conversation in the studio a little while ago because we were we were talking about games and people were talking about how much time they'd spent in Overwatch, yeah. and so me and one of the team members, Andy, started talking about MMOs. Now, uh, I'm going to reveal this now. I played a lot of World of Warcraft between the ages of 11 to 23. I want to say mm -hmm. so, a good 12, 13 years. And I recently, I recently went back for the re uh, recent expansion, so I had, I actually had a good chance to check recently. In the recent expansion, I have put in, there are 24 hours a day. I put in 16 days. So that's about 380 hours in the recent expansion, give or take. Over the lifetime, across all my characters, I've put in, I want to say, close to eight and a half thousand hours, give or take, into World of Warcraft, which is both impressive and depressing at the same time in a way considering some people use that time to get a PhD. <laughs> <laughs> Losers. <laughs> so we'll, we'll finish with this question. What are you doing at the end of this interview, Jack? Oh, that's difficult. It is Friday night, so I'm oh, half tempted shit. to go down to the pub, but seeing as we'll still be at work, I'll probably be working on what I'm working on at the moment with the intention to possibly go to the pub afterwards, so. Now that we've glimpsed into Jack's life, learned he's an alcoholic, uh, <laughs> Jack. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, and the siege has failed. Oh, my work, my war wolf's still going strong. No, so oh, I did oh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got it down. Through, you're breaking through. Like. I'm just going to march into his, into his kingdom. Yeah. That's me done. Um, we'll finish here. Uh, firstly, Jack, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for uh, having me. I really enjoy talking about. Yourself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love talking about myself. Who knew? If you guys have any developers that you'd like to see in the hot seat, although I've done most of them now, um, leave a comment below and let me know. And as always, if you like the video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe here on YouTube for more Stronghold goodness every single week. See you next week.